Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen and I'm your host and I'm the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn and Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. I also have a new website called littlebeanlovesyarn.com and I'll put all the information for my social media down below. But welcome back. It's <laughs> my third upload this week, which is kind of crazy. Right now it is Friday and I'm very excited for it to be the weekend. Let's be honest, I have uh, another sick kid. <laughs> I feel like it's the theme of my life right now is everyone is sick, but I think my three-year-old has a little bit of an ear infection or at least a blocked ear, so we're gonna go to the doctor this afternoon. But anyway, I just wanted to film a little podcast for you guys. Um, I did film a bit earlier in the week, so if you missed Monday's podcast, you can check up um, in the corner of the video here, here, I don't know. One of these sides has the eye. I always forget, I believe it's this side. I don't remember, I don't remember. That's how good I am, I, I don't remember very well. So <laughs> um, I'll just put the link to the video um, and you can see some progress that I had made on my granny stripe blanket and also had on my little purple pair of socks. I haven't made any progress on those things since Monday so I'm not gonna show them to you. But I do have some finished objects to show you and they're not hand knit. Um, if you can see back here this little device an unusual looking device that is a circular sock knitting machine and I have invested in one yay so that is my new toy so to speak or at least a new tool for me to use um, for myself personally and for my business so um, I uh, have been practicing on it a lot and I wanted to show you some of the things that I've made so um, the first thing that I made was this sock this was made in Cascade Heritage Wave, which is just kind of like a gradiating sock yarn. This is going from like a bluish black purple to more grays in purple. Uh, it's very short. This was just a practice and I was practicing toe up. So when you do a toe up sock on a sock machine like that, you are cranking out the toe first and then hanging it back up. So you'll have, you won't have to kitchener the seam down here. I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> um, it's a little bit difficult to tell. Oh, my phone is ringing. But I have some drop stitches here. Gotta get that. Sorry about that. Um, I have somebody coming by to watch my son while he's napping so I can take Cece to the doctor. So that was my in-law, my, my husband's grandmother. So anyway, back to the sock. Um, this sock, as you can see, is a right old mess. I had a dropped stitch in the heel, and I also had some dropped stitches along the seam where I pick up the, um, the toe on the, the machine. So what happens is you begin knitting your sock on one side. You start almost like a heel where you're making these short rows for the toe, and then when you get to, like you knit the whole toe, and then when you get to the point where you need to knit your sock, you reattach the rest of the toe to the rest of the machine. So you have, you know, your 30 stitches, this is a 60 stitch sock. So you have your 30 stitches that you've been working, or, you know, you go down and then back up again. And then when you make it back to that halfway point, you hang that first row you knit back onto the sock machine so that you create the toe and then the whole toe is stretched across and then you start knitting the cylinder for the foot. That's how it works. And so I did not do it very well. So this was the first attempt, but I was just getting used to the machine and how it worked and the tension and everything. So then I tried doing another toe because I wasn't entirely sure about tension and everything like that. So as you can see here, this is my own hand dyed yarn. This was just a one of a kind pot soaker, like a blue skein tonal you can see that the stitches up by the toe are extremely tight and then they loosen up here so I was having some issues with tension this is the toe side where it got re-hung back on the machine and you can see here I've dropped stitches okay back again appointment made 2 30 that's in half an hour so I have half an hour <laughs> to finish this up okay 
So the lighting's changed a bit. Apologize for that. We have some clouds coming over. So hopefully the lighting is still good. But this is my own hand dyed yarn. This is the Cho experiment I did. Again, the tension's a little tighter here and that's a slightly bit looser here. I had some drop stitches where I wasn't able to pick them up and put them on the machine properly, so the stitch dropped. So once I knew that it was dropped, I just knitted off the machine to try again. So then my next attempt was a successful sock. I only had one or two drop stitches in here. I was able to better adjust my tension so it looks a lot more seamless. It's still not perfect, but it looks a lot better. This is the seam for the toe. And then there's the decreases you can see here. If you not focus on my pretty little face here. Um, there it is. Uh, there's a drop stitch here in the toe and there's a couple small holes here where I was, you know, you have to wrap stitches on the machine, so I didn't really do it the way it was supposed to be done, and it left a, a small hole. But the I mean, blah, 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 that can be fixed, um, easily mended. And then here's the heel, and the heel has a very sorry, the heel has a very tight tension for some reason. I don't know why it's so tight, much tighter than everything else. But the heel came out just fine. Um, the sock is too wide and it's too long, so I had to play again with the tension on the machine and fixing it again. Um, and I find that to be a little bit difficult only because, oh only because you, it's not like hand knitting where you're exactly sure of how you are, I'm like really blurry, there we go, um, it's not like hand knitting where you are sure of your own hand tension, this is a knob, so I had to like reset the machine, make the stitches as loose as possible, and then like tick back up to see the type of tension that I wanted. So this was my second attempt. And then this was my final attempt. Now this sock fits widthwise, but it's too short. <laughs> I overcompensated for the amount of rows that I thought I was going to need, so it is short by I think three or four rows. For my own foot, I can stretch it, but then it starts spreading the stitches out. Uh, I did have a little bit of a hard time with the tension at the toe. So the tension at the toe is far looser than the tension of the sock. So I am going to have to adjust. I think that this would block out. It's not at, it's much more seamless than the, my other attempts have been. Uh, this colorway, by the way, is Fleur, but it's going to get reworked. This has not been available in the shop officially. I did put the skeins of this batch for sale because the striping didn't quite work out. As you can see, this is a 60 stitch sock and you can see there are gaps here in the row of blue and I really didn't want, I didn't want it going out like this because at least to the general, it's not, it's not my final formula. I didn't want it, this to be available to the general public, but you can see here it's short about four or five stitches some are three or four stitches one two three four five so five stitches usually at the most but you can see it breaks up the pattern in a way that's not very pleasing to the eye so i didn't want this to be the final the final version so i'm using this as a practice skein but the other three skeins are gone anyway so this was my most successful attempt at a toe up sock on the machine I really love using the machine. It's so fast. <laughs> like, it makes me want to knit more socks <laughs> because I can actually use the yarn and see what the yarn looks like. The, the main reason why I purchased the machine was so that I could do swatches. So, you know, 50 to 100 row swatches and you could see the colors and how they change. So, it's a little, there it is. That's more true to color. So, Anyway, that's what I kind of wanted to show. You can see the difference in gauge, even just adjusting the machine. Ignore the length of the sock, but the width of the sock, you can see it is thinner by maybe a full inch, a half inch on each side. Obviously it's too short, so if I'm looking toe to heel, you can see I stopped my heel, you know, a full 10 rows before I had done this heel because it was so large, but I didn't account for the change in tension when I 
decided, oh, I'm only going to do 50 rows here. It should have been more along the lines of 55 to 58 rows. And this one was a full 60 rows. But it's at a different tension, so lesson learned. Anyway, that's my adventure so far with the sock machine. It's been really, really fun to play around with, and I am looking forward to doing some more demonstrations and kind of tutorial videos as I'm learning things because I'm still very new at it but I think I'm getting the swing each attempt I've had has gotten you know better and better and better so they're starting to look more like socks this isn't finished either you know it's a raw edge up here you can see it's just rolled over there's the loose end if I pull this bloop, it'll pull out the sock so anywho <laughs> That is that. Um, I got my river needles today. So I want to show you guys the needles, the latch needles that are on the machine because I wasn't able to show you the ribbing needles when I did my demonstration. So the full size needles are, are the cylinder needles, are the needles that do the knit stitches. They come up, pop up, grab the yarn, and pull down to get the stitch. So here are the the main cylinder needles and if you watched my previous video you saw this needle it has the latch on it that opens and closes for knitting so it'll pop up the latch will open it will grab the yarn pull down and as it pulls down the yarn will push the latch up and close it so that it can cleanly knit and then when it pulls back up the yarn pushes the latch open again it's kind of cool so then the river needles I got today in the mail and so I'll be playing with these later hopefully um, these are the river needles so they're very small and they sit horizontally like this in the ribbing dial and again they're a latch right here Boop. you can see the latch so when they push out the latch opens it grabs the yarn and when it pulls in the latch closes and it purls the stitch so these are for purling and these are for knitting so you can see the size difference, there's quite a bit of a difference in the length of the needle. So it's not like I could even have used the cylinder needles as ribbon needles because they're so short. So I'm very excited to show you the results of that once I start playing around with the river. The river. <laughs> the river. Alright, so I'm going to take a short break. Whoa. I don't know where that needle just went. It dropped on the floor. It's gone. It's gone somewhere into the void. Anyway, I'm going to take a short break. It won't be very long for you. It'll be a second that so I'll come back and finish the rest of the podcast. But I have to go take CC to the doctor's office. Hooray! Parent life. Hashtag mom life for the win. So I will catch you guys in a few. Whew. Okay, so we are back from the doctor's office. We've had some time to settle in. Tucker's awake. So we might have a little visitor coming in, in the in the podcast, just uh, just because. Uh, Cece's okay, just so you guys know, she does have an ear infection. Um, so that is that. But for this part of the podcast, I did want to answer some questions. I solicited for questions on Instagram. I also have an Asking Anything thread in my Ravelry group, so I will just jump right into those right now. So on Ravelry, we had two questions. One is from Miss Jen, her user is Storm Coast on Ravelry. She asks, apologies if you've gotten this question before, but what is the strangest thing you've been inspired for by, inspired by for your dying? Um, that's a really good question actually, because I haven't thought something was strange. I don't know, I, I mean, I guess like the darkest thing that I was inspired by was the series Stranger Things um to dye yarn I mean I haven't been dying all that long there are many dyers who have died for much longer than I have who have many more colorways like I don't have a ton of colorways but I would say like the darkest ones were stranger things those were really fun to um to come up with and to dye we had just watched the entire series I think in a couple of days and I was like oh yeah I'm definitely going to dye some yarn based on this show so that's what I did uh, so if you saw Into the Void Nancy and um, They're Drawn to Blood, Never Say Die. I feel like there was one more. I don't know. 
I feel like there were three or four colors, um, but those were the ones that were the most memorable, at least to me. Um, but yeah, the, that was the darkest, the darkest stuff. But Never Say Die is one of my favorite colors. I really enjoy that one. So the next question is from Boston Mama 3. On Ravelry, she said, how much of your own hand-dyed yarn do you use? I'm learning to dye for fun, and with the exception of a couple wonky skeins, I kind of want to cast on every single one. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the, the problem? <laughs> you just want to use all the yarn. Um, I actually have not been able to stitch too much in my own yarns because I stock them up and they sell well. They're, they've been selling very well, which is great for me, which makes me want to dye more, which makes people buy more. You know, so it just ends up being this cycle. So uh, from time to time, I do set aside skeins for myself. I set aside skeins for myself to use, and so I kind of keep them, you know, to one side so that I'm not. So hi. Mm hmm. Here goes Tucker. All right. Bye. Oh, are you staying? Are you staying? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> anyway okay and then I also asked for questions on Instagram so I go through some Instagram questions with our visitor hi pop pop a pop pop yeah so on Instagram I only have a couple of questions hey bub don't touch that uh, Clarissa Beth crochet cakes on Instagram she also has a podcast the crochet cakes podcast and Boston Mama 3 has her podcast as well if I can remember to link them all below anyone who has a podcast I'll list below uh, but Clarissa Beth says to me <laughs> so she says to me how do you resist buying all the yarn and the short answer to, to that is I don't um, I do and I don't oh wow wow let's not touch that okay I do and I don't um, if I see something that I'm really inspired by or that I really like I'll buy it I've bought from several indie dyers in recent times hi you want to see you want to come up but I just I just don't because I don't have the time to stitch as much as I want to and um, I feel like that ends up stopping me because I don't like having a ton of stuff hanging around because as you can see we don't have a ton of storage you say hi yeah yeah okay and then Melissa Miss Nitty by Nature Hey, Melissa. She says, tips or tricks do you have when it comes to sock knitting? I'm terrible at picking up stitches. I always pick up backwards. Yeah, I don't know. Um, your guess is as good as mine. I'm horrible at picking up stitches. I just try to aim, you know, one for every row or every spot. You know, you can see a regular pattern in your stitches. So even if you're doing like a slip stitch flap. Oh, really? Uh huh. <laughs> you can usually see kind of where to pick up, but I never know which way to pick up, and then I always end up dropping some or not picking up enough or having it look wonky. <laughs> so I do short row heels when I'm stitching. I've grown to love the fish lips kiss heel. I've now done a few uh, socks with fish lips kiss. So I would suggest if you haven't yet looking into some short row heel methods like the German short row heel or the fish lips kiss heel. Oh, you see Tuck's shirt. He has the best shirt on today. Oh, I have the best shirt on. Look. The Beatles. He's got the Beatles. Huh. And then the last question I had was from um, Clarissa Beth's mom, Caroline, uh, inspired underscore professor on Instagram. She asks, always wanted to ask you how you decide on the names for your colorways. Um, does which comes first the chicken or the egg so does the color come first and then the name or the name and the color it goes both ways in, in terms of inspiration <laughs> you want to get down um, I've done colors that I I've had a general idea of what I wanted the color palette I wanted and then I look at it and say like oh yeah that reminds me of X Y or Z and then there are other times where I go into it with an agenda what you want to come up <laughs> where um, I go into it with an agenda and I know exactly what I want to dye and so I will dye something based on a specific palette or a specific look or a specific photo. So either way, either I'm both, but I really do try and name my colors well because, you know, even one of a kind colors I like to name because it gives them more meaning. It's 
better than like scheme yeah. number 782 color 156 like that's not very inspiring so i want to still inspire people even if something comes out unexpected on my end or is one of a kind yeah. what is that <gasps> yay can you blow a kiss can you blow a kiss can you blow a big kiss what's that hey what's that you see the window where's Cece go you want to go get her you want to go get Cece? Where is she? So, the last thing I want to talk about with this little dude here is we have hit 500 subscribers. We have just gone over the 500 subscriber mark, so I wanted to open a thread in my Ravelry group for a giveaway. So, I am going to give away ooh, one skein of Bellatrix. So, this is my self striping color Bellatrix. It is a two stripe self striper and I still haven't listed the last four that I have done so I am going to put one up for a giveaway so this skein of Bellatrix could be yours so just go on over to the Ravelry group I will leave a question um, I'll leave a question there I'll have to pick it later to know what I would ask what would I ask what should I ask we, what should we ask? Can we say, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? Hmm? Or, oh, what's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? Do you like duckies? I hate it. Do you like kitties? Kitties. Do you like doggies? <laughs> okay, we'll ask that. What is your favorite animal? If you have one, and just answer that question. I will keep the thread open until um, Thursday or Friday morning of next week, and I'll close it and I'll do random number generator, and we will pick a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> I used to say I can't podcast when the kids are up. Oh. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.